when American senators start a hearing thinking they will humiliate Elon Musk for the shortcomings of his SpaceX programs, they fail to realize that the billionaire has a savage response in store. The congressional chamber hummed with tense energy, every corner charged with an unspoken anticipation. Rows of suits filled the room, with pens poised to take notes and eyes pinned forward, waiting for a moment they knew could get heated. Among them sat powerful lawmakers, tech industry leaders, and top military officials. Their faces a mix of skepticism and curiosity. Today they were gathered for one purpose, to hold Elon Musk accountable, or at least to try. The Senate subcommittee's lead, Senator Graham, cleared his throat as he prepared to speak, a hint of a smirk dancing at the edge of his lips. His carefully pressed navy suit and red tie projected an image of authority he'd cultivated over decades in Washington. After all, this was supposed to be his day, his moment. The cameras were rolling and the nation was watching. He adjusted his microphone with practiced precision, setting the stage. Mr. Musk, he began, his voice controlled yet pointed, carrying the weight of years of political sparring. While we recognize your achievements, there are questions that need answers especially about your success rate in the space sector. Elon Musk sat across from the table, his demeanor relaxed, exuding his usual air of confidence. Dressed in a dark suit with an open collar, he looked as unfazed as ever, tapping his fingers gently on the table. The morning's headlines had predicted a showdown, but Musk appeared almost amused by the proceedings. He didn't flinch under the glaring lights or the weight of the room's collective attention. He'd been here before, had faced critics time and time again, and today would be no different. Behind him, a row of SpaceX executives sat rigid, their tablets and notebooks at the ready, though their CEO showed no sign of needing their support. Senator Graham went on, his southern drawl becoming more pronounced as he built his case. In October 2012, a Falcon 9 mission failed to deliver a secondary payload to its intended orbit. The issue stemmed from one of your rocket's Merlin engines malfunctioning. Now I ask you, what recourse did the customer have in such a case? Did you, did SpaceX, take responsibility for that failure? His words echoed through the chamber, each syllable carefully chosen to paint a picture of corporate negligence. Musk's eyes flashed as he prepared to respond, but Graham wasn't done. The senator had spent weeks preparing for this moment, and he intended to make the most of it. His staff had compiled a thick dossier on SpaceX's history, highlighting every setback, every delay, every deviation from the perfect record that traditional aerospace contractors claim to maintain. Furthermore, the senator continued, his voice rising slightly as he built to his crescendo, ULA has a record of 68 consecutive launches without a single failure. And yet under your leadership, SpaceX has faced publicized setbacks, development delays, test failures, explosive landings. So, Mr. Musk, what's your response to that? He leaned back, satisfied with his opening salvo. A ripple of murmurs ran through the room. Journalists' fingers flew across keyboards, capturing every word. Military officials exchanged knowing glances while industry representatives shifted in their seats. Every pair of eyes was now locked on Musk, waiting to see how he would react. This was no ordinary corporate inquiry. This was a calculated confrontation, months in the making. But Musk's lips curled into a faint smile, as though he'd been waiting for this moment all along. Senator, he began, leaning forward and fixing his gaze on the lawmaker. His voice carried clearly through the chamber, steady and assured. By ULA's definition of success, that mission was perfect. The room went silent, stunned by the unexpected turn. Musk's words dripped with confidence, challenging every assumption in the room. Everyone leaned in, knowing he was about to give them the full, savage response they'd come to witness. Even the most seasoned Capitol Hill veterans straightened in their seats, recognizing that this wasn't going to be another routine hearing. To understand how Musk had arrived here, one had to look back at his SpaceX journey, fraught with challenges, resistance, and ultimately, groundbreaking success. When Musk first founded SpaceX in 2002, he was breaking into an industry dominated by giants like United Launch Alliance, ULA, a joint venture of Lockheed Martin and Boeing. These corporations had been the go-to contractors for military and governmental space missions for years, their influence extending deep into the corridors of power in Washington. They didn't take lightly to newcomers challenging their throne especially not an outsider from Silicon Valley with grand promises of revolutionizing space travel. ULA's strategy was built on consistency and reliability, an approach honed through decades of government contracting. Their rockets boasted a remarkable success rate, meticulously crafted to maintain government and military contracts. Each launch was a carefully choreographed dance of proven technologies and established procedures. To ULA's backers, reliability meant everything, even if their launches cost several times more than what Musk proposed. 
But Musk, with his visions of affordable, reusable rockets, had changed the paradigm. SpaceX would prioritize affordability and innovation, but it also came with a learning curve, one that both inspired and terrified the aerospace establishment. In 2012, SpaceX launched a mission carrying a secondary payload alongside its primary one. During the ascent, a Merlin engine on the Falcon 9 rocket failed, causing the secondary payload to enter the wrong orbit. Though the primary payload succeeded in reaching its destination, the incident was a blemish on Musk's record. The media criticized him relentlessly, and competitors sneered from the sidelines. ULA supporters used the incident to paint SpaceX as reckless, a company cutting costs at the expense of reliability, potentially endangering national security assets. But Musk stood his ground, demonstrating the resilience that had become his trademark. He openly acknowledged the failure, but also maintained that the mission's primary goal was achieved, a stance that frustrated traditional aerospace players who were used to more conservative definitions of success. When confronted about whether the secondary payload customer had recourse, Musk didn't mince words. He explained that SpaceX had built customer protection into its contracts, stating that mission success was measured by the primary customer's declaration. If the primary mission was deemed a success, the company and its investors recognized it as such. Yet, in the years that followed, SpaceX achieved what many had deemed impossible. They successfully landed orbital rockets, developed rapidly reusable vehicles, and set records that ULA struggled to match. This disrupted not just the economics of space launch, but the traditional definition of mission success itself. SpaceX's achievements sparked heated debates in the industry about innovation versus conservatism, cost versus reliability, and the future of space exploration. Now, years later, with SpaceX poised to potentially take on more government and defense contracts, ULA and its advocates saw a chance to make their criticism stick. For people like Senator Graham, this wasn't just another oversight hearing. It was an opportunity to challenge Musk's credibility and defend the traditional aerospace establishment. Senator Graham had a final card to play, one he'd been holding close to his chest. He leaned back in his chair, letting Musk's initial response hang in the air for dramatic effect. His next words were carefully chosen, designed to expose what he saw as the fundamental flaw in SpaceX's approach. Mr. Musk, you may consider that perfect, but the public deserves to know the truth. After all, ULA's record is unmatched. 70 launches without a failure, if we don't count anomalies that were minor. He emphasized the last word with a hint of sarcasm. A slight chuckle spread through the room, with some attendees exchanging knowing glances. It was well known in aerospace circles that anomalies often included events that would have been deemed failures in SpaceX's more transparent playbook. The traditional contractors had perfected the art of managing perception, categorizing issues in ways that preserved their perfect records. Musk tilted his head, his expression unfazed. His years of battling entrenched interests had prepared him for moments like this. Senator, if we're going by ULA's standards, there were two incidents, one with the Delta IV Heavy and another with the Atlas rocket, both of which required Air Force investigations. I'd hardly call that perfect, but it seems we have different definitions of perfection. His words carried a subtle challenge, daring the senator to dispute the facts. The senator's smile faltered. He hadn't expected Musk to be so direct, nor to challenge ULA's record so openly. The room tensed, sensing the shift in momentum. But Musk wasn't finished. He had more to say. And for once, Capitol Hill would have to listen. We at SpaceX measure mission success by our customer's declaration. It's simple. If they declare the satellite functional and in the correct orbit, we count it as a success. It's the same metric used across the industry. More importantly, our profit is directly tied to mission success. If we fail to deliver, we don't just lose our profit, we face penalties. Unlike some contractors, we don't get paid for trying. His words hung in the air, a clear reference to cost plus contracts that had long been the industry standard. Graham interjected, trying to regain control of the narrative. So, you're saying your definition of success is simply what your customer says it is? His tone suggested skepticism, but there was a note of uncertainty in his voice. Yes, Musk said calmly, his response echoing through the chamber. Because our customers aren't interested in definitions. They're interested in results. They want their satellites in orbit, their cargo delivered to the International Space Station, their astronauts safely transported. And we deliver, consistently, at a fraction of the traditional cost. An audible gasp rippled through the room. Several military officials leaned forward, their interest piqued. Musk's response wasn't just an answer. It was a rebuke to the very notion of perfection ULA touted, a challenge to the status quo that had dominated American spaceflight for decades. For a moment, 
Silence blanketed the room as everyone absorbed Musk's words. Senators exchanged uncertain glances caught between admiration and resentment for the man who had just so boldly defended his company's approach to space exploration. The traditional power dynamics of a Senate hearing had been upended, replaced by something more genuine, a real discussion about the future of spaceflight. Senator Graham cleared his throat, attempting to regain control of the moment. His next words came more carefully, measured. Mr. Musk, some would argue that your approach is unconventional, dangerous even. The aerospace industry has established procedures for a reason. Musk leaned back in his seat, a self-assured smile spreading across his face. His response would become one of the most quoted moments of the hearing. Senator, if unconventional is the price of making humanity a multiplanetary species, then I think it's a price worth paying. And as for danger, space itself is dangerous. It's a risk every astronaut, every engineer, every nation willing to explore it is prepared to face. The question isn't whether we'll face risks, but whether we'll let those risks prevent us from achieving something extraordinary. The room erupted into murmurs, with reporters feverishly typing notes and snapping photos of Musk's unflinching expression. The senators had come prepared to challenge him, to expose what they saw as flaws in SpaceX's approach, but none had anticipated Musk's brazen, unapologetic defense of his company's mission and values. His words resonated with a truth that transcended political theater. Space exploration had always been about pushing boundaries, about taking risks in pursuit of something greater. The lead senator wrapped up the session, but the energy in the room lingered, charged by Musk's sharp words and unyielding confidence. SpaceX had its critics, sure, but after today's testimony, it was clear that Elon Musk was undeterred by their doubts. His vision for the future of space exploration remained clear and unwavering. As Musk left the chamber, followed by a trail of photographers and reporters, the room buzzed with a new understanding. SpaceX's vision might be a gamble, but it was a calculated one, driven by a genuine desire to advance human spaceflight. And nothing, not even a Senate inquiry, could shake Musk's determination to revolutionize space travel. The hearing had started as an attempt to hold him accountable, but it had ended as a powerful reminder of why SpaceX had succeeded where others had failed. Sometimes the greatest achievements come not from avoiding failure, but from being willing to risk it in pursuit of something revolutionary. As the chamber slowly emptied, that lesson lingered in the minds of everyone present, a testament to the changing nature of American space exploration. Have you ever witnessed a moment where someone completely turned the tables on their critics? What do you think about Musk's approach to innovation versus traditional aerospace's focus on perfect records? Should space exploration prioritize safety and consistency, or is some level of risk necessary for breakthrough achievements? Share your thoughts on this historic hearing in the comments below, and let us know which side of the debate you're on. Join us for more exciting stories like this one.